History runs deep across Oregon's varied landscapes where imagination travels. Hi there, I'm Grant McComey, your host for Travel Oregon's Grant's Getaways. And this week, we discover a unique chapter of Oregon history in a place you may have missed. We're heading over to Eastern Oregon near Baker City and taking in a varied menu of outdoor adventures and experiences as we explore the Oregon Trail. Hell's Canyon of the Snake River offers you thrills, chills, and maybe a spill along Oregon's most challenging Whitewater River. Forecast was 100% showers today. But a rugged and remote experience is just one entree in a remarkable menu of Eastern Oregon adventures. This place stands out. You see the green because that's the only green around. Upriver from Hell's Canyon, Farewell Bend State Park at Brownlee Reservoir is an oasis of green, where acres of locust trees provide cool relief from summer sun, a historic site that earned its name from earliest pioneers on their westward treks. This is where they had to say farewell to the snake and move up a little bit northwest. Walking down Hell's Canyon would not be a fun thing. But the nearby campground is fun with lakeside sites for tent or trailer, plus rental cabins and all the comforts of home. A good place to spend some time, cast a line, and enjoy a break. An archaeologist once told me a good place to camp is a good place to camp, whether it's 150 years ago or today. And that's why this was on the Oregon Trail as a gathering spot. Less than an hour away near Baker City, the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center gives you perspective and context to the region's earliest days. People say, what do you do? Well, I keep the story alive. That's really what we do out here. The center opened in 93 and shows through tours and exhibits how westward migration forever changed Oregon. You know, we think about coming across the Oregon Trail as being this great big adventure and, you know, hurrah, let's go. But it was really a sense of desperation. Most people were coming out here. Outdoor replicas give you a feel for the experience, but you don't have to travel far to see the real thing. So Jeremy tells me that this is the Oregon Trail and it's adjacent to the Interpretive Center, a good place to get a feel for it. But it's not really appropriate because there were actually many Oregon Trails and the reason for many Oregon Trails is because nobody liked to eat dust for very long. So oftentimes the wagons would spread out across the valley floor. You'll not need to do that here at a place that holds on to the Oregon story. And it was the largest non-forced migration that we know in human history. It came right through here, so it was a big deal. It still is. In downtown Baker City, once called the Queen City of Oregon's gold country, there's no finer place to rest your head than the Geyser Grand Hotel. This is what happened next after the, tra the trail blew through here and then settlement ensued. So this is the literally the next chapter after the Oregon Trail. It's a hotel where elegance may spoil you with fine crystal chandeliers, rich mahogany millwork, and a spectacular stained glass atrium that takes the breath away, plus 30 guest rooms that invite you to linger longer. Comfort, big comfort. You won't see anything petite around here. It is also comfort and elegance that traveled a long road to recovery. You see, the Geyser Grand story began in 1889 during rough and tumble days of Oregon's gold rush. Albert Geyser built a statement in his namesake hotel that Eastern Oregon rivaled any big city offerings that travelers may have seen in Seattle or San Francisco. The Geyser Grand thrived for nearly half a century before the gold played out and harder times arrived. In fact, the hotel was boarded up and abandoned when Barbara Sidway and her husband arrived in the early 90s. They found a tremendous mess with damage throughout, including a building without a roof. And pigeons flying in and out of the open roof and camped out. The walls were so wet that you could actually grab the plaster with your hands and feel the water. But Sidway saw something remarkable in the bones of the building, a promise for a new life. There was so much of the original millwork still intact that was you know, done with a lot of money and care and artisanship. 
just extraordinary. And so a three-year, $8 million restoration followed. Their investment in Baker City's future was completed and the hotel reopened in 98. This was elegance in the wilderness. Denny Gross, a tour guide and Barbara's mother, loves to dress the part of the hotel's early days. She can tell you much about the Geyser Grand's history and why the family thought it was all worth saving. Because once it's gone, history has disappeared. You can't retrieve it if you tear it down. When you stay at the Geyser Grand Hotel, you are really stepping back in time and you are connecting with what Eastern Oregon has been and is about now. You just show up and we will get you pointed in the right direction for a great adventure. Oregonians take great pride in their connections with our pioneering past and these adventures will teach you much about our state. I hope you'll check them out. We have all the details, directions, and the contact information so you can make your own outdoor adventure in Eastern Oregon right here on the Travel Oregon website. So until next week, do get out here and explore the great Oregon outdoors and let Travel Oregon be your guide. For Travel Oregon, I'm Grant McComey.